I feel like Susan Collins is always dangling a little carrot of like progressivism in front of our faces and we're all just trying to snatch at it, but she's never going to give it to us. Never she gonna just give likes it to the us. chase. She lo- she's not. And we own cat toys. We know how they work. We get it. <laughs> now it is time for the rant wheel. You know how it works. We spin the wheel and rant about the topic. Let's welcome back Emily and Kylie for the rant wheel. You know how it works. All right, we spin the wheel wherever it lands. We rant about the topic. This week on the wheel, we have RuPaul's Drag Race, Boosters, Instagram, Harry Potter prequels, Kirsten Cinema, The Zombie Apocalypse, Banks Tweeting Like Wendy's, and Dairy. <laughs> Let's spin the wheel. It has landed on the zombie apocalypse. I'd rather talk about Susan Collins. Please. I have one thing to say about the zombie apocalypse, which is like there was like 10 years ago when everyone was talking about what they would do in that kind of apocalyptic situation. Guess what? We're in it. It turns out everyone's just going to pretend it's not happening (laughs) and that there's nothing you can possibly do about the zombies. Okay. But let's talk about Susan Collins. Okay, Susan Collins, who is supposedly pro-choice, has said that she will not support a Democratic bill to codify Roe. She claims she has some reason that's unrelated to abortion, and sure, whatever. It was reported that Susan Collins, who is pro-choice, blah, blah, blah. I just want to know, when do we get to stop referring to her as pro-choice? She voted to confirm Kavanaugh and Barrett and a shitload of other Trump-appointed judges. How had she successfully branded herself as pro-choice? It's like, okay, in the past, Robert Durst owned a health food store. (laughs) But that's pretty low on my list of ways I describe Robert Durst. (laughs) Right? I really don't associate his name with bodily health anymore because of the actions that he took that betray those values. So why are we still talking about Susan Collins like she's pro-choice? And why is the narrative around her always disappointment? I don't, why are we expecting good things from her? What did she do that I'm missing that has now let us down? Every single time people call her a hypocrite, I feel like I'm being pranked. Like she's a consistent person. Like, I know when you're a kid and your parents say, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed, that, like, the disappointment is worse than the anger, but I don't think that applies to senators. (laughs) Let's just get mad at her and see if that works instead. (laughs) Yeah. She stinks. Did you know that Robert Durst owned a health food store? I did until I I was researching that. I did not know that at all. (laughs) I feel like Susan Collins is always dangling a little carrot of like progressivism in front of our faces, and we're all just trying to snatch at it, but she's never going to give it to us. Never going to give it to us. She just likes the chase. She's not. And we own cat toys. We know how they work. We get it. (laughs) We get it. Jigs up, Susan Collins. <laughs> We're mad and probably not much we could do about it for four to five years. <laughs> it has landed on Banks tweeting like Wendy, suggested by Kylie. Okay, that's me. <laughs> um... I have some gripes with banks who are pretending to be my friend. They're not my friend. You are a financial institution designed to lend me money. If you were my friend, you would have picked me up from the airport, but you did not, bank. You did not. Um, I was recently living in New York, and uh, in, the, in the subways, there was this like bank startup app thing that had all these ads that were like, they were tweeting essentially, like in the ads, like they were like, nobody, absolutely nobody, nobody at all, nobody, banks, free pen. And I'm like, fuck you. (laughs) I don't care. Is that supposed to be a dig on banks? Because I'll take a free pen. I'm not mad. I don't care about whatever new bank this is. I also should disclose that I'm part of the problem. Because in the year 2015, I worked for 
an unnamed bank startup that was doing payday loans. Um, and my job was to respond to all the Facebook comments and they specifically told me to tweet or to respond like the Wendy's Twitter. <laughs> and <laughs> so uh, without naming the bank because I don't want to be sued, I mm -hmm. don't have any money. Um, they were like, their big claim was like, it's payday loans with no interest. And people kept responding on the comments and they're like, why do I, why did I just get charged $75? I overdrafted, I don't have any money. And my job was to respond to every single comment and go, um, maybe don't eat so many waffles. Oh my God. That is so dark. That is such a dark trying to break into comedy job. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a different place. <laughs> it was $15 an hour in a time that $15 an hour was a big deal. <laughs> um, and uh, I don't really have an end to this, but stop trying to be my friend. You are a bank. Just give me the money and stop doing the 2008 housing crisis. Just stop it. <laughs> do something else. Get a hobby. I do think that the... Um that the 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 good I'm being quote fingers for those listening the good social media voices become the voice that all the other companies steal like it's only a matter of time for all the banks sound like Steakums you know <laughs> it's Steakums yeah. is what's next Wendy's is very 2013 what's next is they're all going to be existential philosophers like yeah. Steakums you fucking <laughs> yeah. watch you watch they're going to become You're very gonna be like, sophisticated you want to work for the Chick Fil A Twitter account how much Nietzsche have you read. <laughs> 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 Let's spin it again. It has landed on RuPaul's Drag Race. Here's what I'd like to say about RuPaul's Drag Race. I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. It is one of the greatest shows ever made. When I leave here, I will go home and I will watch several episodes of it until my eyes are barely able to stay open. I would jump in front of a bus for Jinx Monsoon. A literal bus. Didn't you just start watching it like a month ago? I started <laughs> watching it a month ago. <laughs> and here's the reason I wanted to talk about this. I genuinely believe it is built in baked in cultural homophobia that no one told me that this was not just good, but perhaps the greatest show ever fucking made. I do not understand why we're talking about Survivor when RuPaul's Drag Race was fucking out there. And also, it is very hard for me to be in the position I currently am in, which is watching six or seven year old episodes of RuPaul's Drag Race, afraid to tweet about it because Twitter is filled with psychotic, broken brain social media zombies who will spoil me instantly. All I want to do is to get into a time machine and participate in the fun online culture around the time that these episodes aired, but that is not available to me. Why, why is it not? Because of homophobia, because not enough people told me about this at the time. No one told me how good it was. I fucking love it and I am alone in it. All I wanna do is talk to the internet about RuPaul's Drag Race, but then people respond with names of people I haven't met yet. John, can I say two things? Please. Number one, you said no one told you about this. This weekend, RuPaul broke the record by becoming the most Emmy awarded person of color in history. And number two, I haven't watched it. Should I start so we can text? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Emily, please start watching it so that we can text. I am here for you. You don't even know who Raja is. <laughs> if I saw Raja, I would fucking die. Let's spin it again. It has landed on Kirsten Cinema. Suggested by Emily Heller. Wow, plot twist. Yeah. <laughs> I don't actually have that much to say about this one. I just want to say every time I go on Twitter and look up 
her name to try and see people talking shit about her. It thinks I just don't know how to spell movies. <laughs> it just thinks I'm the dumbest movie buff of all time, and it shows me a bunch of shit about the Marvel Cinematic Universe that I do not give a shit about. <laughs> that one was tight. Uh, and I will, I will add two points. Point number one, the reason we are at this Cine Lounge Outdoor Theaters is because Ronan and I came here and watched the movie Old. But it was impossible to find a place to watch the movie Old Outside because when you Google Old Movie Outside, <laughs> they just want to show you Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> so that's something about algorithms. Probably a niche problem, grand scheme of things also. Um, another point. Uh, a friend of mine had a TV show come out and it got a bad review and I tried to tell him, don't worry about critics, they're eunuchs at the orgy, an old saying. But I couldn't figure out how to spell eunuchs because my guess was Y-U-N-I-K-S and no one could help me get from there to E-U-C-H-U. What are we doing here? Do you ever try to do just like voice to text and then see what it says? I should try that. <laughs> I should try that. Kyle, what do you think of the show? Of this show? Like, like as an idea. <laughs> like as a, as, a, as a format. Here's the thing. I'm having a blast. Um, are you guys having a blast? <laughs> and that, folks, is what we call pandering. <laughs> I'm a fan of Kylie. I'm so glad she's here. Let's spin it again. It has landed on dairy. Was it suggested by you, Kylie? This was me. Um, here's the thing. My gripe with dairy, I will admit, is personal. <laughs> it's a highly personal issue that has happened to me recently. Mm -hmm. And I, okay, without getting too graphic, I can't digest it. <laughs> I don't know if we have any other lactose intolerant heads in the house. I mean, this stage is like all Jews right now, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm super wasp, but I didn't, I, I can't do it. Loud. That's the ambulance trying to take you to the hospital for diarrhea. <laughs> because they know, they know that I tried to make charcuterie earlier and they know that I ate the cheese anyway because I can't cook. My problem with dairy, is that it is a food made for babies. Infants can digest this food. This is something that babies can do, and I can't do it. I pay taxes, <laughs> and I can't do the same thing that they can do. It's infuriating because I was raised on the Got Milk campaign, and it was all those hot girls drinking milk all the time, and now I can't do that? What is 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 that? <laughs> and that's all I have to say about that. Give it up for Kylie and her dairy um, relationship. I have a, do you remember there was this like tabloid story uh, in New York about like a couple where like, the, like there was some kind of acid thrown in one of the members' faces, but they stayed together. They had that kind of crazy love. I think they made like a six part documentary about it at some point. Like, they like fell in love, then they hated each other. Then there was like a violent altercation in a trial, but they stayed together after. Like, and I think it was something called at some point crazy love. That's my relationship with dairy. <laughs> and I'm never gonna leave. No, That's I'm never thing. gonna leave. Dairy has to leave stop. me. No, I can't stop. I can't stop. Dairy's got a hold on me. <laughs> And that's our show. Thank you to Rory O'Malley, Kylie Brakeman, Emily Heller, and everybody who called in. Thank you to Hallie Kiefer and Kendra James and Brian Semmel and Justin Howe and Kyle and Nar and Matt DeGroot and Jesse and Ari Schwartz and Milo and everybody on the Cricket team. It was really fucking hard to put this show together. Guys, give it up for Emily and Kylie. Seriously, everybody at Crooked had to work so hard to figure out a way to put this show up. So give it up for everybody at Crooked who made this show happen. They did an incredible job. There are 408 days until the 2022 midterm elections. Have a great weekend, and I will see you next week. Bye, everybody.